Is Dan a Werecat yet? He is not. He has not been turned. Listen, if Simba's bites turned you into a werecat, I would be a big orange cat by now, because that cat has bit every limb and extremity I have. <sighs> well, I'm, gl I'm glad. Is, is Kitty okay? Because he was having yeah, issues. Yeah, okay. Um, I just made vet appointments. They're all due for their annual checkup, so... And I had to, like, they're doing curbside, so I was like, okay... I kind of have to explain. I was like, I have two that are a bonded pair. They should be okay. I want to bring the other guy in separately. I was like, because he's a handful. <laughs> it's like, I usually bring him in drugged, but all that does is buy you 20 minutes before he starts trying to murder everybody again. Another uh, another important thing that did happen at the Democratic Convention tonight. Um, uh, Bernie Sanders uh, spoke live from Endor. Um, yeah, I saw that. No word on if he uh, actually uh, got the Ewok vote that they were attempting That's to. That's a very important vote. Very important demographic, the, uh, the Ewoks. Cannibal teddy bear vote. This virtual convention thing, everything is so weird. It's kind of like an infomercial for the Democratic Party. I'm I'm a little, I, I'm kind of a little burnt out on all these virtual things. Because the format, it's like at first we're kind of like, okay, we understand. Schneid weird. We have to we have to compensate. We still want to do stuff. But after like about the fifteenth one, we're kind of like. They did run a bit tonight. They ran a package of Joe Biden speaking with like civil rights leaders, and they had all the people on big monitors. It looked like he was speaking to the World Security Council. <laughs> From like the Avengers. Uh, I mean, at least they're being responsible about it. Like I, I Phantom Menace was out yelling at people in a cornfield. The box and a letter. Okay, we'll deal with that later. Like Donnie was out in a footala farm today, just yelling at a crowd of people. Yeah. Now he wants people to take oleander extract, which is literally poison. You know what? Um, if we're hitting the Jonestown portion of MAGA, uh, I'm just going to say I'm not in a hurry to slap Kool-Aid out of everybody's hands. It's all I'm saying. The strategy there is like the My Pillow guy was like, no, you should have everybody take oleander extract. And he was like, that sounds like sound medical advice, My Pillow guy. Why would I listen to Anthony Fauci? Everybody take oleander extract. <laughs> You're going to stop him? I ain't going to stop him. Speaking of ripping flowers off poisonous trees and eating them to own the libs. I don't even, I, I, I don't understand. Um, it's, you know, Jones down. Um, and Hey, we're going to get to that at the end of the, uh, the bit this week. Cause last week we had the dude setting his balls on fire for the internet. Um, this week we've beaten that one. How? <laughs> Do you really? You're going to find out the answer, Tara. Do you really want to know? Look, guys, it's 2020. God knows when the aliens and the murder hornets are coming and when Cthulhu is going to rise from the ocean. Everybody just lay very still. <laughs> drink a lot of water. Tiptoe to the kitchen every couple hours to get a snack. Stop. Stop. Just stop doing everything. <sighs> Please. For all of us. Well Loki apparently agrees. Yes. All right. Well, with that in mind, get the intro running. Each week, Catherine, the Radio Dead Air audience, go out on the worldwide interwebs, find all sorts of horrible stuff, bring it back here for a little segment we like to call What the Fuck is Wrong with You? Do I have this set up right? Yes, I do. got it over your face. I'm sorry. Move that over. Fine. As long as my hair looks good. Oh, uh, so this is a genre I did not want to get to, to take off, but apparently it is. It's kind of because they're feeling more put upon because now it's it instead of being like we suggest you wear a mask, the shit's like an ordinance now, and they're losing their fucking minds over it. So this keeps fucking happening. Um, 
buckle up, everybody. This is the new normal. I can't imagine working retail right now. Uh. Woman hits Phoenix airport gate agent after being denied boarding or not wearing a mask. Yeah, no. Yeah. You don't get to just, just do that. A woman struck an American Airlines gate agent after she was denied boarding at Phoenix Sky Harbor International Airport on Wednesday for refusing to wear a mask. The woman was a passenger on American Airlines flight from Los Angeles, to, which is, uh, according to FlightAware, arrived in Phoenix. She was scheduled to connect to Las Vegas after she refused to wear a mask on the first flight. So she went through the entire flight, no mask. Crew members flagged her itinerary to be denied service. Yeah, they, they can do that. After arriving in Phoenix, being informed they would not be able to take the connecting flight to Las Vegas, uh, the individual became irate and struck an American team member in the terminal. Law enforcement was requested, and since there is now a law enforcement matter, for additional questions to the Phoenix Police Department. Blessing said the gate agent was not injured. <sighs> so. First, first of all, th- everyone is lucky they didn't turn the first plane around. Yeah, they can do that, too. They're allowed to do that. They're allowed to just turn the fuck around and land. And you fuck over everybody. Yeah. But this is, they got to their connection, and all you had to do, for fuck's sake, you're, when you get on the plane, you're not allowed to take your top off. You're not allowed to air out your genitals. Nope. There are rules. You're not allowed to smoke. No vaping. There are they 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 make rules about what's allowed. What kind, you're in their house, and we we've accepted all of those rules. Right. But we've been accepting them just fine for forever. A little a little piece of cloth over your plague vector cake hole is just too far. I don't know why this is the hill people want to die on. And then after being said no, the response to try. I know what will improve the situation. Let's deck the flight attendant. Then they'll behave. You do not get to fuck with the people in the airports. Yeah. You don't. Who gets to go on the plane? Who doesn't get to go on the plane? That's all them. It's their own little fiefdom. There's no democracy there. No. You know, we we can talk about authoritarianism. Airport gate attendants. They are are the perfect dictator. And as soon as you're on a plane, you better be nice to those flight attendants because they own your ass. Mm -hmm. Your ass is property of the flight attendants until you land. This is just going to keep going until we have a vaccine. Even after we have a vaccine. Because they're not going to get the I'm vaccine. I'm going to have microchips to track you. I, unlike, I, unlike my iPhone that is always on me. <laughs> I read a tweet that, that hurt me, which happens quite often. But uh, what was it? That, that she was going. Uh, someone. It was. A, it was a woman. It was a white lady on Twitter. Was going on about. Um, that when you get a vaccine for the flu, you get sometimes you get the flu. So if you get a vaccine for COVID, and I'm like, no, you don't get the flu, it's dead. You get right. the immune response to it. That's not sometimes the same you get thing. Symptoms for a couple of days. Right. That's not the same thing. If symptoms you ever had are the not flu, you know goddamn well that symptoms for a couple of days is not the flu. Yeah, you, you get you get symptoms for it, but you don't get the actual infection. Right. Not the same. This is just a very stupid time. Or is it I, I was thinking it's not a stupid time, it's just we're becoming the thing this is this kinda of, I had this thought about idiocracy, that movie that we all love to quote, and we're like, yeah, it's turning into idiocracy. It kind of already was. It was yeah. just on the down low. Yeah. Now it's out in the open. Yeah, now now it's just it it's it's masks off. No pun intended. 
Um, well, next up, we have some of our more regular shit, which is to say terrible shit. Um, I have, we have forever made the joke about get off my lawn, you kids. Get off my lawn. That is that is the joke in, in popular culture. That is We are old. Yeah, well, um someone kind of took that shit to heart. Oh no. Man with crossbow rifle sentenced to th for threatening to shoot kids who ran through his yard. Uh a lance in Michigan. A northern Michigan man was sentenced to one year. Is it Allenson or Alanson? Allenson. Whichever. Allenson would be my guess. Yeah. Uh, was sentenced to one year in president after threatening to shoot children running across his yard and then injuring a police officer while resisting arrest. Stephen Muller, 59, of Allenson, was also sentenced to two years of probation after he pled no contest to felonious assault. Uh, Muller uh, called Emmett County Central Dispatch in November and told the dispatcher that children were running through his yard and he would shoot anyone who came to his house. Okay. Someone has a fundamental misunderstanding of what 911 is. It's, it's for one thing, it's not a declaration of intent to declare war. I mean, I guess if you want to report a crime... You can report your own. Nothing says you can't. <laughs> when uh, Sheriff's County's deputies arrived on the scene, they found Muller outside armed with a 50 caliber rifle and a crossbow. <laughs> Why the crossbow? <laughs> you have got a 50 cal rifle. To deal with children. To deal with children. I have never seen an armored child in my life. What, are you expecting that, like, little Colossus or something? And, like, I get it can be annoying if, you know, your neighbor's kids are little assholes and they're messing up your lawn. It's not murder annoying. No. I mean, if it's really getting on your nerves, figure out who spawned the little bastard and go have yeah. a talk with them. Find their parents. Right. Put up a fence. Not a fifty cal rifle. I know Dan's not here. You gotta tell Dan later. This dude was had a fifty cal rifle to deal with the fucking neighborhood kids. That means the big rounds, right? Yeah, that's not a small bullet. That'll just, depending on the size of the child, that'll just make a child explode. <laughs> Well, no, but it's an interesting thought. Children. Oh, Jesus Christ. I mean, goddamn. The, the crossbow. I'm still sitting there going, you have a gun that can put a hole in an engine block. And you're sitting there with a crossbow. Who was the crossbow for? Again, we have to repeat to everybody that um, when you point a gun at someone, that constitutes assault. Not shooting at them, not putting your finger on the trigger. It doesn't matter if it's a real gun or not. If you give them the impression it's a real gun, that constitutes assault. And at least from... <laughs> What my husband, who is obsessive about gun safety, has told me, you never point a gun at anything you don't intend to kill. You don't put your finger on the trigger unless you intend to shoot. And you don't point it at anything you don't intend to kill. Yeah. It's not a finger. No, it's, like, not, it's, not, you can, it's not a mute button. Right. It's not mute. It's not stop. It's not pause. It's not rewind. It's not fast forward. It's assault. And possibly murder. Yeah. Because I feel like I'm going to make an assumption here. I feel like if you're the kind of guy that has to pull a 50 caliber rifle on children for running on your lawn, you're probably not the most disciplined gun user. Josh, Josh has a wonderful point. 
if you shoot the kids, they're not getting off your lawn any faster. It's true. <laughs> if you shoot them with the 50 cal, they're going to be part of the lawn forever. And once it's a crime scene, you're going to have a lot of people on your lawn. <laughs> That's a terrible thing I just said. It also, is, I can't What's stop that? laughing. I just... <laughs> This is my problem with American gun culture, man. Not yeah. to get too serious, but like other countries do not have this issue. Other countries don't let you own a 50 cal. Right. Where, where people think a gun is a remote control. Where nope. people think a gun is a solution to every problem. Other countries do not have this problem because they don't masturbate to their fucking guns. Ew. Well, We've got uh, this next one. Quite often on the show, we encounter situations where insurance agents would just be like, I'm out. That's this next story. Um, I don't know what happened. I only know that there's a picture here that just makes me go, fuck. And there's the picture. Small plane slides off runway at Illinois Airport, stops in street, where a car drives up its wing. Federal, okay. Federal Aviation Administration investigating the circumstances of an incident that unfolded on Friday, during which a small plane overshot the runway and ended up skidding onto a road where Satan managed to drive up on the wing. I've, just, I've, I've got the, the theme to the Blues Brothers run into my fucking head right now. See, I'm thinking this is a scene out of, like, one of those The Rock Kevin Hart movies. Fast and Furious? No, the ones with Kevin Hart that are, like, comedies, but also action movies. Oh, I, so, like, I don't know. So, like, they're chasing about. the plane, but Kevin Hart's driving. <sighs> so The Rock shoots down the plane, but then Kevin Hart drives up on the plane. I feel sorry for the dude driving the car because this is yeah. not covered in driver's ed. This is not. Th 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 there are very specific circumstances involved here that yeah. I, I was not I was like, taught She's going to come out in her little apron and just be like oh oh no. I was taught you don't change lanes when you're actually going through an intersection. Don't do that. Um, three car links. I was taught that. Um, I was taught you don't you, you don't move your head to look at the mirrors. You adjust the mirrors. I, I saw all that. I was not taught what happens when a plane appears in the fucking road. No, no, they didn't cover that for me. I I I cannot wait for the insurance agent to be like, okay, you had an accident. Yes. Okay, what sort of vehicle did you hit? Uh, was it a truck? Was it? A, it was a plane. It was a Cessna. The Cessna. What? <laughs> no, I'm asking like what you hit. Yeah. The plane. You know, single engine planes. Uh, oh, so you were driving around like an airport hangar? No, no, it was moving. <laughs> That's going to call send somebody into retirement. <laughs> J. Jonah Jameson and those farmers ads, he's just like, fuck it. I'm going to go catch Spider-Man. Chevy Impala. Uh, I just look at that. The plane is fucked. Yeah. I mean, the car is not happy, obviously. I, but I'm pretty sure the car is in better shape than... The car looks mostly okay. <laughs> it's the plane that's just fucked. Yeah. I mean, I can't entirely blame it, dude. I'm not sure I'd have the reflexes to go, fuck, plane. That's not covered. I don't... I don't know what I would do in that situation. I did <laughs> once run over a tarp that was blowing across a highway and looked out my rear view mirror and realized it was not behind me, which meant it got we stuck in my car's undercarriage lady. and had to pull over and like wrestle a half melted tarp out from under the bottom of my Saturn. Ugh. There's a car on the wing of the plane. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're Shatner when you need him. Well, hopefully at the bottom of the ocean, but, um, 
Let's see, what's next? Okay! One of the things about this entire situation with the pandemic is it's making us reevaluate what things are worth. Remember when this all started, we were like, you know, we, we, we went through our normal day and then after it all began, it was like toilet paper disappeared. Yeah. It, it, it was a... Disappeared. It was a bizarre time. We placed our values strangely. Well, I, I don't think that... I, I, someone didn't get the memo that things are a little different. Um. Bank heist netted hand sanitizer. And what may be the least lucrative heist ever, a convicted felon broke into an Iowa bank early Thursday and escaped with only hand sanitizer. <laughs> Mark Gray, 39, is locked up on a trio of felony charges after allegedly burglarizing three Sioux City businesses, including a security national bank branch. Picture it right. Uh, Gray is locked up uh, on $6,000 bond in connection with the string of pre-dawn break-ins. Uh, he's on probation for a 2019 burglar conviction. Investigators allege that Gray used a tool to smash the glass door of the bank around midnight. <laughs> He then entered into the lobby area and stole the hand sanitizer from the bank. He then fled. Eh. I. You eh. broke into a bank. A bank. Where they have lots of money. And what you took <laughs> was the bottle of hand sanitizer. Yep. <laughs> Even the cops are sitting there going, I'm sorry, what? This is definitely like we do a lot of is the juice worth the squeeze kind of crimes. Like, was this <laughs> worth it? <laughs> do you know what the what the malware numbers are like in jails and prisons. They're very bad. They're bad. Real bad. Sanitation yeah. in prisons, not great. The dude, you, people pile oh, up like wood. Will says he wants to make, he wanted to make a clean getaway. <laughs> dude like, was look, already on probation. You did the opposite of what you were hoping to do. Because, yeah, you were already on probation, so you're going to prison. Where you're not going to have hand sanitizer. And, like, this I mean, is not worth it. You, you could have... You could have gone to something like a Walgreens and shoved a bottle of hand sanitizer in your Seriously, pants. Seriously, you go to any place that's open, they have them every 10 feet right now. You could have stolen it really easy. Yeah. Why did you pick the locked bank? And like the people at the Walgreens <laughs> are not paid enough to care. No, they don't give a shit. If you feel like and a- there's a fucking hand truck full of hand sanitizer in their back room. So that dude making $9 an hour is literally just gonna go replace the bottle. He does not care. But you chose oh, bank. to break into a place full of cameras. <sighs> is this like a compulsive thing? I... Well, your ass is going to jail. Yeah. <laughs> uh, let's move to Japan. And this is, I didn't even know this was still a thing. But it's still a thing. I thought this this had burnt out. Oh my god! This the, the 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 Pokemon Go thing is four years old now. Oh yeah, people still do that. I thought that had like just burnt away, but I think the one that really never went anywhere was the Harry Potter one. They tried a Harry Potter version, and it just didn't go anywhere. Well, um, not only did this not go away, it's gotten stupider. 56-year-old Pokemon Go trainer arrested for assaulting 55-year-old trainer. 10th of August, uh, Hokkaido Prefecture Police arrested Kento Sato, 
on suspicion of assaulting a 55-year-old acquaintance who was seated inside his compact car. Sato is accused of grabbing the man by his chest through the window of his car and damaging a side view mirror by kicking it. The cause of the dispute was said to have been the smartphone game Pokemon Go. Both men were competing for control of the same gym with their respectable collections of magical monsters when things got hit, heated between the 56-year-old Sato and his victim. The altercation may have been the result of tensions brewing over a long period of time, as both men admitted to having known each other for a few years after meeting through the game. So, wait. They... They were... Listen, I don't even play Pokemon or Pokemon Go, but even I know <clears throat> that if you're trying to get control of a gym, you don't fight. You have your little monsters fight. <laughs> That's why you have them. Pokemon would be a really different game if you could just fuck a motherfucker up. <laughs> but that's why you have a Pikachu. Pikachu, I choose you. Like literally. Curb stomp just, a motherfucker, I choose you. You're just playing the game wrong. <laughs> you're supposed to have a Squirtle Bop fight a fartsicle. <laughs> 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 That's not, that's not how the game works. Also, you're 55. You're getting in fist fights in the street over a phone game. Sato used crotch punch. It's super effective. Look, I, I have a couple <laughs> games on my phone. I can't imagine getting in a fist fight over any of them. I just really like, and this isn't even a new one. Like, when this was the big craze, when this was, like, you know, the year it launched, and everybody, I was walking around looking for fucking Pokemon. My fat ass. Um, I can't wait for 72 people <clears throat> to tell me the hippo Pokemon again. Mm, yeah. I'm aware of the hippo Pokemon. Thank you for your service. <laughs> I don't remember what his name is, but I know that there is one, and I appreciate it. Ah. <laughs> uh. But yeah, I would have understood it back in 2016. Understand it. Understood. Back in 2016. 2020. We're four I, years in. I wouldn't have understood it back in 2016 because they're little cartoon beasties in a game. It's a fad. You know how fads take on. People get weird. Yeah, I I gotta be honest, even when I was a child, like maybe I didn't I didn't participate in a lot of fads because my mom thought not being cool built character. <laughs> It's like when Cabbage Patch Kids were the thing, we all asked for Cabbage Patch Kids for Christmas, and my mom like showed us on the news where people were getting fist fights over Cabbage Patch Kids, and was like, "You don't need one that bad," and I'm not doing it. Yeah, you know what? Being not cool. Like, what kind of character not cool builds? Being not cool. That's the character you build. You're you're not cool. But like we were taught early that fads are not that fucking important. Because my mom was like, "I'm not getting in a fist fight in the Macy's, so you can have a doll." Like, no. I'm not doing it. And that's and so we were like, oh, we'll ask Santa. And she was like, I told Santa no. <laughs> she was like, I called Santa and said that I didn't want him to get in a fight in the Macy's either. <laughs> They're like, oh man, she went over our heads. Oh, we were like, oh, okay. <laughs> so I never had a cabbage patch kid. So I think maybe I just don't get fads because we were sort of conditioned <laughs> out with them a little. But yeah, I don't. Oh, okay. Speaking of fads, do you remember a few weeks ago, probably about a month or two ago, when we got the story of a new fad that was popping up among gun owners online? Yes. Which was when they were taking a gun and to mock people who were interested in gun safety. They were pointing you know, like being alive. They were pointing guns un with no safety on at their loaded at their own genitals. With their finger on the trigger because they also on the wanted trigger. to own the trigger discipline people like my husband who mm. has, you know, still has all his tackle for that reason. Well, this story has many levels of stupidity. Gun enthusiasts celebrate man who shot himself as the balls 
as their king. Member of a Facebook group dedicated to taking pictures of loaded weapons pointed at dicks finally shot himself in the balls. Now, didn't we say this was going to happen? We said exactly this was going to happen. And what happened? This is literally why things like gun safety and trigger discipline exist. Rather than step back and start questioning whether the practice is wise, the group made him an administrator and are now celebrating him as their king. On August 11th, a member of the group loaded guns pointed at penis, posted a, pic a video of himself pointing a loaded 1911 handgun at his junk. There's a brief pause before the gun discharges, so this was streamed live. The original video of the man shooting himself in the ball as a subsequent thread has been deleted, but members of the group captured the video and aftermath and re-uploaded it. Hey boys, I might have fucked up. The man who shot himself in the balls wrote above a picture of his naked legs and splattered blood on the carpet of his floor. A towel was stuck between his legs and he printed out a copy of the Constitution is crumpled on the edge of the photo. So he did, the first thing he did was not call... 911. It was to hop on Facebook, take a crotch selfie, and show everyone the carnage. The guy posted through the incident as he bled, um, went through my ma scrotum, mattress, box spring, and floor. Originally, the man thought he just grazed his balls, but a subsequent hospital visit told a different story. Um, what I thought were two graze wounds turned out to be an entrance and exit wound. And they're hailing this guy as a hero. Like, how long before men are shooting off their own dicks to own the libs? Hopefully soon. Like, how long before... We're going to have fellas, is it gay to still have your penis? I, why? Because it seems like a natural progression at this point. But if you're a real man, you'll shoot your dick off. I don't know what's more frustrating, that this happened or that you're just watching them celebrate their own stupidity. Ain't that America. They're like, yeah, this is our hero. He shot his dick. What? Dude, we were all pointing guns at our balls, and this dude actually shot himself in the balls? So he's he's in charge now. See, I told you we didn't need no fucking gun safety. Literally, you do. And he's a good example of why. I it's, I it's like are men okay? I don't know. Look, look. You only get one set of genitals in this life, okay? They don't, yeah, they don't grow back. Now you may choose to do various things with them, and that's okay. It's your body, your choice. You know. Decide what you want and all those sort of things. But among those choices, shooting yourself in the genitals does not lead you anywhere good. And I mean, again, if that's what you want to do with them. <laughs> okay, I guess. I don't understand it. Well, Lady, maybe, me just maybe... Maybe talk to somebody first. Are you really going to take a big load of poop right now? Yep. All right. Lady Minxiao Maybe. in the channel says, the ball's on this. Wait a minute. Like, they have free online phone therapy now. Maybe yeah. just talk it out with somebody. Dad never hugged you? You should tell somebody about that before you shoot off your dick. Yeah, I just... It... And just the, 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 to be like, you know what? I should chronicle this for Facebook while it's I, I, there's blood gushing out of yeah. my my scrotum. I, this needs to go on Facebook. Oh, they don't want to see this. You 
know, who's going to want to see it? The doctor that has to sew it up. I, but like, are men okay? No. Obviously not. I don't get it. I am one, and I don't get it. I don't fucking get it. I think the fact that humanity manages to consider continue reproducing is all the proof we need that sexuality is not a choice. Because in this day and age, who I, would choose to be attracted to men? And I look forward to your comments. I don't give a fuck. Call me a bitter, mean, old feminist hag. I am. I'll take it. But come just, on. You're shooting your own balls off. Reality breaker. The gun is good. The balls are evil. I understood that reference. I mean, at times, th there have been times when I've actually sat on my own balls. I hear that happen sometimes. It hurt so bad. I, I, I distinctly remember one time it hurt so bad I cried. I'm not ashamed to say that. It's my balls. I sat on them and it hurt so bad I cried. I can't I mean, imagine. I'm in Simba, but we'll be walking across Dan's lap and get some right in one of the jewels. And I, that experience alone precludes me from ever putting any sort of combustible explosion yeah. device near them. I, it's, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't understand. What is the fuck is going on? Let alone for comedic value. Yeah, this is, this is ouch my balls. Only it's happening now. And that's the thing. I know, even before this happened, I didn't understand that trend because, like, what's the punchline of that joke? Apparently, the punchline is, "Ouch, my balls. my balls!" Why is that funny? Um, we are experiencing the suffering of another human being that is not us. Someone who is not us is hurt. No, but like they're doing it to themselves. Like the guys. That yeah, are this is. Pictures, yeah, like, this is. This what's is. the punchline of that joke? Why is that a funny meme? Because you might shoot your balls off. <laughs> Irving in the channel says, "This is my rifle. This is my gun. This is for shooting. This one's gone." <laughs> You're me walking a little crooked now. Is, the guy I guess, can have kids, and I got this Twitter comment a lot. Well, at least he can't breed. He has a second testicle, you guys. Yeah. I don't know if you know how anatomy works, but you, they both shoot. You get yourself a backup. Doesn't matter right. which set. Doesn't matter which set of reproduction organs, reproductive organs you got. You get a backup. You women can lose an ovary and still have children because yeah. the other one works too. You can lose a ball and still produce offspring because uh, the other one works too. I don't know why I have to teach you guys so much sex ed. Very upsetting to me. Because it's America is why you have to... You're all out there rubbing on each other and I have to teach you that both balls work. You know, you know what? I, I've got a, I suddenly have a David Allen Go song in my hand. Have you ever heard the rodeo song? No. Oh, here comes Johnny with his pecker in hand. He's a one ball man. And he's off to the rodeo. You ever heard that? No. <laughs> David Allen Coe. He's a weird dude. Um, <laughs> uh, so, what yeah. have we learned today? What? What have we learned today? Um, don't shoot your balls! <sighs> Look, just because your friends want you to shoot yourself in the balls does not mean you should shoot yourself in the balls. Have you ever been in a situation like that? Shoot themselves. If they want you to shoot yourself in the balls, they are not your friends. Yeah, have, you, you know. have you ever been in a situation like that where you got your like, kids and a bunch of kids want you to do something that's obviously yeah. a bad idea, but they're like, dude, it'll be so badass. Do it. I had friends dare me to eat cat poop out of a sandbox, and I was like, no. No. Well, you won't be cool, and I'm like, Okay. You can be cool for the both of us. Go ahead. Right. I, I also will not have eaten cat poop, and I'm comfortable with that choice. Mm. Um, That's not the way you bust a nut. Oh. That's, that's terrible. <laughs> We've learned that um, 
in Pokemon, the, the monsters are supposed to fight, not you. you yeah. Pokemon, you're doing it wrong. Like, um, no wonder neither of you can get control of that gym. You don't even know how to play. <laughs> We've learned that uh, if you're breaking into a bank to steal hand sanitizer, I think you fundamentally misunderstood the point of a bank. Yeah. There's, it's not, that's, I don't think, you know, um, think about your life choices. We've learned sometimes the, 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 the career that's going to have the most stories when you're old and gray is, uh, insurance agent. They, sh they have seen some shit. Um, we learned if you're pointing a 50 cal at a six year old, you get some shit to reevaluate in your life. Think about your life choices. Yeah. Talk to someone. And finally, you, feelings, you just have to deal with them. And finally, we, we've learned that for ages, businesses have required all sorts of apparel, whether you wanted to or not. Now they've simply added masks. They can do that. It's they allowed. Can. That's that's your little laminated card that misspells HIPAA doesn't mean shit. No. Nope. In fact, technically you just you're just like we're not gonna sell you anything. In fact, technically your your um masquerading as a federal agent, so you just committed a felony. Cool beans. So yeah, this this is <sighs> in the balls. <laughs> 